at this time, we are here at the AD's game plan session. And the topic of the day, it is uh, student athlete support during and after COVID-19. And I am Alva Amaker, the host of ANA Athletic Consulting and Vigilant Safety Training Center. And I have some coaches coming in and AD is going to come in at any point you come in, um, introduce yourself and tell us where you represent. All right, go ahead, Mr. Amaker. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kenny Amaker. I am a former head coach, football coach at Central High School. I'm the current offensive line coach of Dr. Henry A. Wise High School and assistant coach of Central High School lacrosse. Okay. All right. Anthony Arrington, head baseball coach at Bladensburg High School and head soccer coach at Friendly High School. Boys. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Hey, guys. Good morning. My video is not quite working, but uh, Al Revelo here with uh, Backable California High School soccer coach. Okay. Awesome. All right. And I'd say we have uh, Tiffany Miller Bevins coming in. What we're doing is just introducing ourselves, saying where we represent, and um, yeah, just kind of what area you're from. Miller Bevins is on you. She's still getting set up. You're getting set. Okay. All right. So the um, as we said, the topic of the day, before we even get into the deep of the topics and saying supporting the children, coaches, how you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling with where we are in this present uh, climate? And because in order for us as coaches and ADs, whatever, to help the athletes, we got to make sure that we are stabilized ourselves. Mm -hmm. So... What are what are what are your thoughts? How how are we feeling as far as this present time and being out of your normal regimen? Okay, go ahead. Anybody? Anybody can take it first. Kenny. Well, for me, I would be in season right now with lacrosse, so it's kind of uh, frustrating. Um, not sure what the future holds. From the football aspect, we would be um, starting what we call our install. So this coming week, we have to develop. Matter of fact, we have a staff meeting tomorrow on Zoom. We have to come up with a way to have virtual install and practices, virtual install for our team so we can proceed as if we will have a season in the fall. Okay. Coach Arrington. I know for me, obviously, baseball, we at home. So that's kind of rough because while I got seniors who actually have been getting looked at and one got accepted to a school yesterday with some money, academically that is, Everett University in Danville, that's, oh, even, that's even complicated because you can't do the, the second steps of the on-campus visits and meeting everybody and getting the money process done. So that's been hard do virtual emails and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Soccer, obviously, I can't do anything because we building the program again. You know, this is normally when what I would do is visit the middle schools during the spring on my off baseball days and see, you know, the kids, everything. You can't do that. Also, the kids who are friendly right now because my kids uniquely, some went back to their home countries before this even got locked down here. So oh. I can't even contact them. You know, until they get, until they're able to get back in the country, so that's wow. a whole another can of worms. Wow! You know, because my team last year was like ninety percent ethnic, so a lot of them were like from Central America, so they're not even responding to anything because they're at home. So I have to wait to even get back to even talk anything. Wow! Okay, wow, that's interesting. All right, that's a different dynamic I even think about. Okay, Coach Cali, is he there? All right, Coach Tiffany, it's on you. They got to unmute. Uh oh, I think I'm muted. I got you. I got you. Go there ahead. Go. go ahead. So, the, um, go ahead. I told you, you know, guess again, the question again, just because uh, I saw you pop off, is what is your new normal? What would you be doing currently at this time if we were not on quarantine? And how is that throwing your rhythm off? Or is it? Or how balanced are you at this point? Well, it's actually throwing my rhythm off a little bit. However, I'm trying to think 
being the most positive I can possibly be. So um, as a parent of athletes, we just making sure that they are constantly moving, constantly working, um, not just laying in the bed, chilling out. So um, our boys are up in the morning, they're running in the neighborhood, they're in the weight room, the weight room that they moved around the house. <laughs> um, and just encouraging that. So not only are they actually participating in the strength conditioning process, but I am as well. So I'm up in the morning with them working out and things of that nature. So I'm just constantly encouraging them. They actually keep a journal every day of what's going okay. on with them That's and how they're feeling about it. Um, and I'm excited about the journal because they push each other, you know, um, to just make sure that they are keeping each other up, not eating a lot of junk food. Like they're really trying to make the best of the situation. So and they were even outside throwing football around our back the other day, and I thought it was so awesome because they're a basketball player. And they're like, let's just throw the football around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, just trying to keep just different things, um, watching watching basketball, breaking down some film. My oldest right now is putting his huddle film together. Um, we actually are getting together this week to find different schools and start getting his stuff out there. So I'm taking this opportunity, um, this time that I usually probably wouldn't have to make the best of a for both the boys, so. Okay, and that the is. the coach is trying to keep them encouraging them just to get outside and do some kind of sprints or jump rope or things like that. Okay. So pretty much that's what we're doing. As um, I was in full, um, full club season for volleyball and training of uh, volleyball players and uh, what ended up happening is, of course, we all our tournaments that we had scheduled for the for the rest of the time has gotten canceled, and trying to keep the girls engaged because you know once you stop doing the skills that you have, they you know you get a little rusty, and not knowing when this thing is going to turn around, we trying to definitely encourage the girls because they had just started turning the curve. We're getting comfortable with each other as a team and as a unit that we wanted to. Uh, so we've been actually doing uh, Zoom workouts with them same regimen on our same practice days. We are actually just doing um, conditioning, touching base with them. But what actually did concern me though, and which is kind of what initiated this initial thought to me. And then when I saw what the uh, Texas A&M, the uh, supporting, um, they said black student athletes in the time of Corona, it said maybe it is definitely time for a conversation to happen was every, each time we met with the girls and we meet with them Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, on via Zoom, of course. And everybody said, so we asked, how you doing? How you feeling? Da, da, da. Everybody said, fine, good, fine, mm -hmm. good. And I'm like, wow. I said to myself, how could you just say, you just saying you're fine or you're good? That means, and I thought to myself, we got to change the question to mm -hmm. get more yeah. out of them. And so I just want to give, I, I don't know if everybody had a chance to, Coach Alvaro, 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 are you there? So I want you to, yes, just, okay, go ahead and give you your response on how you're feeling and what would you be doing right now, Cali, at this point? Um, yeah, so right now, basically, it would be switching from high school. We just finished our, right before we got quarantined in California, uh, we had our banquet, you know, to finish up high school which was, you know, right literally the week after. So we finished high school right at the very end. And then wow. um, we'd be at wow. club soccer now. Um, and basically in California, they shut that down. And they're thinking spring season is going to go it'd be in June and July or July and August pretty much. So everything and then tryouts typically are in May. So that's going to be pushed back to August. So obviously a lot of things have to happen for that to be able to be possible. Right. Um, but that's what we're doing. A lot of, uh, you know, as you, as you guys said, uh, moving from a lot of global training because we can't be with people to a more analytical approach. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the stuff that sometimes we don't have the time for because we want these kids to kind of unite and work together as a team. Uh, globally now it's more analytically so i've been using zoom also uh bands which is i don't know if you uh, band has been great because you can do challenges on band and, and live stream so that has been a resource is that b-a-n-d yeah oh yeah. b-a-n-d dot mm -hmm. uh, com uh, it's, dot an app. it's an app okay mm -hmm. yeah band.us yeah band.us okay it's an app yeah, okay. it's really cool. It's free, you know, so you don't have to pay. So it's kind of like Team Snap, but a right. Facebook group, so it works good. Okay, and so they have already workouts in there per sport? 
Uh, no, it's okay. you would have to, but they have a bunch of hubs where you can kind of get a bunch of ideas. Okay, awesome. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So I, to, I will actually type these resources in as we do a, when I do a summation of um, the this, this discussion. All right, we have Miss Troy. Um, go ahead, uh, Miss Troy, and introduce yourself and give kind of pretty much what we were doing, just discussing what where we be at this present time if we were not on restrictions and social distancing at this point and as we begin to move forward right now we're talking from the coaches and ad perspective um to before we get into the students because if we as a adults are not ready or stable then how are we going to do that for the kids so that's where we are okay got you. good mm -hmm. afternoon everybody my name is makia troy i'm the athletic director at creekside high school in fairburn georgia just outside of atlanta um Right now, of course, we'd be in the middle of spring sports, uh, missing out on a uh, little bit of money at this point <laughs> by not those activities going on. Uh, we've actually had a lot of discussions within our district about what kind of relief could be provided for us because we're not having, you know, mm. soccer, baseball, things of that nature. Um, spring isn't necessarily our strongest financially, but when you don't have it, you recognize how much it matters from exactly. some of those what we call, you know, smaller. Not as great of revenue sports, but um, yeah, well, I guess I, ideally we'd be going into spring break starting Monday, but other than that, <laughs> we'd still be getting it done with all of our spring activities at this point. Yeah, um, I would say from the university, I would give a, I'm a summer, I don't know if any, how many people looked at the video um, of from Texas A&M, but this is one of their projections that they're having from, and this is their synopsis of pretty much where they stand at the university level and the conversations that are happening at the next level. Cause we, as the middle ground between youth sports and college, we got to kind of know what they're doing to know, help us determine what we're going to do here. And it's pretty much have the, the ties have shifted and it's almost as if they say, even with being the power schools that the sports generate run the school pretty much academic side is actually running everything at this present time and and it's pretty much whatever the academic side is doing that will gauge what the sports side is going to do so in essence it's like if all the students cannot be able to come back on campus and yet continue to do distance learning there will not be any sports coming in fall mm. That's what the conversations are now. And they said, because you cannot have teams come together if you can't have students on campus, even though the educational part will still be in play. So question, you know, as a collegiate um, athlete, off season, we always had to, we had a regimen, you know, that they would send us home with spring break on as a basketball player. Send us home with a regimen spring break, send us home with the workout session for um, the summer and mm -hmm. then the beginning of August. So. The question is, I, I get that, and um, I didn't watch that, but I did read up on some other things of what schools are actually trying to do mm -hmm. in their thought process. So why not give the potential workouts and things of that nature? And hopefully, you know, I know um, my eighth grader, his coach is having him up them upload. Let me see what your workout is. The workout mm -hmm. and then uploading this since the actual video of them actually doing it. So my thought process is just because we may get into August, we may be back at, you know, um, normalcy, whatever that is, by that time. And if students are actually producing that they have, you know, done, completed the workouts, you know, what that's the, that's the, the thought process because we had to do it off season when we weren't even in this position. Well, they are definitely are going to say they're putting together a, a like daily, a long term plan. That is what the purpose of their session was how do we support student athletes during this time? Mm -hmm because we have, they have a certain anxiety. So for our kids that are in high school, we know that the 2020 class is feeling it. They didn't have, some mm -hmm. of them didn't have senior day. Unlike a lot of school districts are not lucky like California, finish the school year. Right. Mm -hmm. So many of us are still, we're still in season and hadn't had the, maybe the athletic banquet if you did not do it by season. So what is, what we, what, what impact does this actually have for the, 2020 class as you look at them rolling into and what can we do to kind of help them understand that you can possibly still be recruited it's gonna you know it's just gonna be a little different for you but what can we help how can we help them at this present time 
Well, I know being in um, compliance at the collegiate level, they have changed a lot of the rules as far as it um, pertains to um, the deadlines for admissions, the deadline for test scores, because SAT, SAT testing, ACT testing, TOEFL um, have been um, canceled. So a lot of our international students, they can't get their test scores in Mm. Um, to be admitted. So right now, admissions office is kind of working on a new timeline for that. They just, um, well, they had instituted a dead period where we couldn't send out any NLIs. Of course, no, um, no contact, no in-person mm. contact. So during the dead period, only coaches are only allowed to contact via email or um, telephone. Well, I mean, telephone is also FaceTime, so, you know, that's permitted. But um, no NLIs were to be sent out, could be signed, none of that. So student athletes couldn't even commit to the university or, or coaches couldn't get commitments from student athletes during that time. So um, that was just revisited um, this week. And now NLIs will start being issued on April 15th, I think. Okay. Um, because at first they said that we could send out grant and aids um, April 6th. But for incoming freshmen, the grant and aid has to be accompanied by their NLI. Right. If they're signing one. So they moved that whole date to April the 15th. So let your student athletes know that that is the new date. Um, that they should be contacting their um, schools that they're interested in to try to get offers. Okay. Um, the other thing that you all spoke about, about um, when Tiffany said we get a regimen to come home, you know, home with and to do uh, workouts and things like that. So we just also had a conference meeting. Um, I'm with the MEAC. So we had a conference meeting within our uh, teleconference within our, you know, our, athletic conference to go over some of the rules that are set forth by the NCAA as far as um, like things that are voluntary and mm. things that are, we call it CARA versus VERA, um, voluntary athletic related activities and countable athletic related activities. How can they be monitored if um, right now no one's in season so there are stipulations on timelines and guidelines and they were saying well can we put stipulations on them if it's a virtual workout um, oh. if we kind of took a vote because we have to each conference has to take a vote and present it to the NCAA as far as are we going to loosen up those stipulations how can we monitor it if it's you know um, if it's a that virtual whole, workout mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so um, things like this, like on Zoom, where it, it records your meetings and, you know, you can have a set time that they may say, okay, you have to use this kind of system or, you know, it just, it's just a crazy time right now. And as far as um, all the limitations that the NCAA has on, you know, time restraints and practices and things like that in and out of the season, it's just, it's going to be really hard to kind of, um, kind of monitor it. So with the, the um, say with the MEAC, so are pretty much other divisions kind of going on with the same timeline as the April or people may push it back or is that going to be most likely the standard for? Um, well, that was set by the NCAA, not just by our conference. Okay, so so that's, uh, that's going to be the 8th, 15th for NLIs coming out. Okay. April. Vera, that was great. That, Vera, that was some great information because, um, you know, a lot of us are looking on our level, but um, we're bridging the gap, and that information will be great for us to get it out to our student athletes um, on all levels. So um, I think I appreciate it. Yeah, in fact, I have in. a question where that's concerned, actually. Uh, me being a football coach, we have kids that signed National Letters of Intent back in February. Um, I'm sure some of them are st were still waiting on SAT scores. So how was schools going to deal with that when they didn't have the opportunity maybe to improve the SAT score to get that scholarship? 
Any idea how that's working? So that's what they're trying to work on now to try to find out um, with the whole uncertainty of when people will be able to go like to a testing center or anything like that. How can um, how can they even take it if, if they haven't taken it at all? Like, how can they take the, you know, SAT? NLIs that were signed before March um, 13th, I think it was, Mm -hmm. are still in place. Everything that was done before March 13th, they're still valid. Um, They are still working on um, whatever that timeline and constraints that were set forth by the NCAA before we became um, involved in the whole um, COVID quarantine type situation. So everything that happened before March 13th is still in place. Okay. So any NLIs are still valid. If they want to get out of the NLI, they have to go about it the same way they would mm-hmm. okay. do it before. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Um, first, thanks for the information because that's really good stuff. Um, I will. I would ask from a spring coach perspective. I've been reading from your articles that they, at least for baseball, they're going to allow kids, you know, to uh, come back and play that next year. And also read that the Major League Baseball is only going to do five rounds of drafting this year, which means it's going to be a very huge backlog for baseball players that's in college. Now, have, mm-hmm. they, have they addressed that yet in terms of sports like baseball and softball with those limited scholarship numbers and limited roster slots yet? Yes, they did. So. Um, that legislation came out on, um, I want to say March 30th. So for spring sports, for spring collegiate sport athletes, they are giving them back their year of eligibility. Ability. Um, those that will graduate in, um, in May or, you know, graduate whenever they graduate, um, they basically are getting a – um, extension of their clock, uh, extension of their five-year clock, even if they were a fifth-year senior. The thing is, this is the part that is very, um, people have to read. They have to read the documents that come out. Um, for some of you know that we have now what is called a transfer portal, which mm-hmm. is basically like free agency for collegiate a- athletes. Right. Um the NCAA made it so that schools can self-apply the waiver, okay? Mm-hmm. But you can only self-apply a waiver if that student played for you during that 1920 season. So let's just say I have a, a senior, because our baseball and softball teams play maybe six to 12 games already. Um, so they get that year back. If they come back to your institution, they have um, increased the scholarship limit for um, softball and baseball. They have um, waived the 25% rule for baseball players because now if the coach brings you back, they don't necessarily have to grant you at the same amount that they had granted you before. Right. So, um, and then if they, let's say they want to transfer, like I said, the, the student athlete that graduates from your school and wants to transfer to another school, they have to go through the regular um, waiver process that we send through RSRO. That's where we submit the waiver. The committee has to um, ask you for information, and then they um, rule on it. Thank you so much. I'll let my mm-hmm. guys go. Thank you. Amrika, your phone is on mute. <laughs> You're saying something. You're, I, you're I, was muted. I said, I said, thank you for being the resident, uh, you know, whiz today. Um, because <laughs> it, it's, I mean, it, it's important. It's important. I know because we can discuss how we're going to help level and stabilize the kids. Because I know right now there are people, there's somebody still got a lot of background in it. Um, they are... Right now, so part of my concern is that kids want to go outside or depending on where they are, they still grouping together because they want to play. They want to say they don't want to lose their skill. They don't want to. So they, they have, you know, almost putting themselves, they're not almost, they're putting themselves in jeopardy because they say everybody else is doing it somewhere I know. 
So but it wait, about and did you see the thing I sent us about how DC they're going and actually boarding up the basketball courts? They're putting a board. I put it on our chat. They're they're putting a board over basketball, basketball courts. Basketball, the local basketball rims, they so took, that they can't they go out there and play. Basketball rims. They took down oh. the basketball rims in Baltimore City and took down the tennis courts. The uh, next, yeah, in the Atlanta or, or in California, have they gotten that drastic out there to in Georgia and to in regards to kind of controlling what's going on in the community? I haven't seen it in the community. Uh, the issue that we've had is trying to keep the students off of our campuses. So mm. law enforcement is having to assist us with that because, I mean, not just students, even community people. Once they close parks, people are jumping the fences at the schools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah California, they've closed down the parks, uh, but not just with signs right now, but mm. or at least where I'm at. Mm. But I, I see next week probably they'll start locking and taking down nets. I was just I was just um, driving through D.C. and you know D.C. right now because of the cherry blossoms they have a lot of things that are blocked off, but it has been so many people out on those nice days. I mean, an abundance of people, families, people playing in the parks. It's just been really, really for me out of control. You know, um, I don't think a lot of people are taking this really seriously, but a lot of kids are just out chilling and they're just doing things. Um, in my neighborhood, I haven't seen a lot of movement, which I do have a lot of kids who live here, but I don't haven't seen a lot of movement. But I know as I'm driving, um, you know, any around any water or anything, just a lot of people out on nice days. Okay. And it, it's like they don't even they're not even trying to be six feet apart. You know, they're just mm -hmm. walking around, just chilling. And, and it's kind of scary just the thought process of that. All right, so how do we uh, to help stabilize the kids like during this time? What do we need to tell them as coaches to say like, you know, just stay home and do your in-home regimen? They say, well, I've done that. That ain't enough. That ain't enough. But they got to understand that if you jeopardize yourself now, you might not have a later. And that's a piece that they don't necessarily get. And then if you're looking at even younger sports, there, uh, some of some of, some of the kids are being pushed by their parent to be the ones taking them out to to work out, and they just happen to be going along with the plan. Because uh, some of the youth football and athletic people are not really taking it um, to heart because they're still planning their sessions. So, well, how can we help stabilize parents? One who don't want to let their child child miss a, a opportunity. So, what is what's the messaging that we need to have to them to the parent and or the child well i think the whole virtual workout thing is um probably the best route to go because if they get on something like this like zoom as a team then they can go in their backyard their front porch their front steps whatever it is work out as a team turn it down <laughs> they can work out as a team and um they can um didn't I say turn it down? <laughs> and they can still be held. They can hold each other accountable for, you know, getting their workout done. And the coach can see it. And you, you don't have everyone in the same spot, but you have everyone, you know, communicating with each other. Uh, yeah. um, my my um, niece just had a, a dance practice and she, um, they were in the basement and all of them were on, I don't know if it was on Zoom or whatever, but the, the coach was... Um, directing the activities and all of them were doing it so i'm not seeing why they can't just do that even with spring football and things like that the drills that they are doing they can do them outside and in, in their own in their own home their right, own the space, space outdoors mm -hmm. or in a basement a living room whatever it is they can still do those activities together but just not in a group together in the same place so they, they just need to like adhere to all of these rules and social distancing and, and kind of, you know, just keep everyone safe and healthy. Okay. What are the questions we need to ask them? Because again, like they all them kids saying, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But we know really that may not necessarily be the case. What is there any, so, what can I we do, do as questions? Um, yeah. I do have a um, quick thing, you know, now that I've been into this crisis intervention thing and I've been really focusing on the thought process and the mental health uh, 
aspect. I know you had said something about asking them, like, how are you feeling? So I think we need to change up the question. Like, what is going on with you? You know, at this time, how can we change our thought process? What are you doing to make things better? Um, like I said, the boys are actually doing journals. I know the coach has asked them to do journals and they are writing. Um, my oldest son has encouraged my youngest son, get your journal out and start writing every day. And I, my oldest son actually writes twice a day, how he felt in the morning after his morning run you know, and how he feels in the afternoon after he works, he works out. And I think going back and do our self-reflection of what, you know, a real self-reflection, and maybe if the parents just ask those questions, like, you know, how's it going with you? What is, what is something you want to do, you know, mm -hmm. while we're in here, instead of we're always dictating and telling them what to do and what they can and cannot do. Um, so I think just asking them and just being really a part of their conversation, uh, how they're actually feeling about this whole situation. You know, one of one of the issues the from a football standpoint, the biggest issue I'm having is with probably with my juniors. Cause we were had we were in the middle of off season training and some of these guys are probably going to get scholarship we're looking to get scholarship offers. Um so now they kinda feel like they're behind the eight ball. They can't be as physically big and as strong as they would have been. Um they can't attend the spring spring and summer camps probably. So now you got to worry with them, or will I get that scholarship that I was lined up for? And these are kids in the 11th grade. And the same thing, the parents, the parents were, you know, maybe some parents were investing in, in personal training that in some cases now is shut down. Like in my case, I was personal training, and that's pretty much shut down. So, you know, I guess you might want to ask, I'm not sure what the question should be for those type of students, but that is an issue. <sighs> Well, like I say, we, we are, we are. I think the same, the same money they were investing in the personal training, they should order some equipment and <laughs> have the, have the um, personal trainer, you know, like we had to go buy an elliptical and a little, a little weight bench because I have a, a, a athlete that will freak out if he can't work out. Don't talk about and, him. <laughs> <laughs> and so, his personal trainer gets gets on FaceTime with him and they do the workout in the basement. So it's still, you know, and, and they're still having a trainer involved with the, with the athlete or whatever. I know some people may not be able to do that. I mean, right. like literally the weight bench was, I think, $90 and then the little weight set was like $40. So it's a small investment. You know, and if they're playing, paying for personal training, they can afford, you know, two pieces of equipment like that that would, you know, help them get stronger. And just help them do something, you yeah. know, and they can still interact with their trainer with their exercises. They, they, can, they can go about it that way. I think the personal training I was more referring to were position specific for what they do. Um, that's, it's tough from a workout perspective for a football player because we work with free weights and a certain amount of weight to gain weight. So, you know, what they're doing now is their own body weight exercises, which is great. It'll keep you in decent shape, but you won't be able to put that mass on that they're looking for sometimes. So like I said, that, what you're saying is 100% correct, but sometimes it becomes an issue. You know, I know one thing, the floodgates are going to open soon as a, they release the... Absolutely. The, the floodgates are going to open. And my, my concern from a... Uh, sports medicine perspective is people going to jump out there too fast doing too much to kind of okay. say, I, I need to hurry up. I need to hurry up. I need to hurry up and not go back to progressive training and to get themselves up to speed. And mm -hmm. so um, looking at, say for instance, volleyball players. So I had just gotten some of the JV girls that were started coming to open nets and things like that. They now, right back at the beginning. So now they're going to try to come and do a whole lot more because their explosiveness was getting there. But I said, you could do those same explosive things at home, but when you don't have space or when you don't have some of the restrictive things, you don't have space in your house, in your room, you know, you might live in an apartment. So we got to also think about that part to how that can be modified, you know, to make sure they can get some of those things. Yeah. Coach Arrington. I think also, I think also, I think, the states need to um, make a decision as well about if you're going to close school or not. And once you close it, mm. get the athletic part together. Because I know right now, as strict as Maryland is, I mean, I already had guys 
Oh, they asked me, hey, coach, can we do a workout with you? Now, I'm saying to myself, as good as that sounds, I ain't trying to get investigated about what you're doing because of X, Y, and Z and all that stuff. So it's kind of like you guys can do it. It sounds trivial, but, I mean, you, you, you want to make sure, like Coach said, you know, you want to make sure your kids are ready. But at the same time, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where now you're defending while you're on Zoom or whatever, or whatever website you're on, teaching your kids stuff. They're going to think you're a form of cheating. But at the same time, like you said, when they finally do allow us to go back to school, I mean, I joked and told my coaches, there's no way, no matter if it's soccer or baseball, to force our coach, we can't start in one week and start the season. There's no way. That's just soccer. So you can imagine football. They can't start no one week, hey, play 10 games, call the season. There's no way. So they have to have a buffer or something to let us know so we can get these things to the parents and the kids so it could be maybe a streamline of how to be more on the same page versus one state might do this, one state yeah. might do that, yeah. this district do that. It doesn't yeah. help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coach Garner, uh, Robert Garner is on the line. Do you have any comments in um, stabilizing, helping student athletes at this present time? Hey, Coach Amaker. Hello, everybody. Sir. How are you doing? <laughs> All right. Thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, I would just listen to everybody. I thought I thought some of the things that was shared was, you know, really on point. You know, I have been trying to talk to my players about a, a, a few things. Um, one is, you know, I, I think just over a, a long periods of time, you know, we've taken away from our kids. You know, I don't not on purpose. You know what I mean? I just think times have just changed, but you know, teaching the kids how to, I've been talking to my kids about trying to, you know, help them to problem solve, mm. you know, problem solving and creativity, you know, and I hate to talk about, you know, the, the old school versus the new generation. Like I, I really don't even like getting in those type of discussions, but you know, a, a lot of the things that we did when we were younger, you know, we did in situations like this you know, um, where you found a way to work out and you found a way to be naturally strong. You know, mm -hmm. you got kids who, who never go in the weight room, but you put them on the field and you put them on a basketball court and they 10 times stronger than the kid who spends every day in the weight room, you know? Um, and then trying to encourage them to find the creativity of trying to do things to better themselves, both physically, mentally, you know, on their own. You know, I, I think that's something at during this time to get with the kids um, to embrace. Like, mm -hmm. for an example, you know, with, with my squad now, you know, we've gotten to a point now where we had our first team meeting and now we're going to meet. I'm talking about returning kids. Now we're going to meet virtually once a week uh, just to talk it out, you know, just to talk it out hey, what you've been doing and things of that nature. Now, in my very first meeting, I discussed with them, hey, I could sit here and I can give you everything that you will need. I can direct this plan for you and monitor it and all of that stuff, but let's use this time to see what you can come up with. So I just send them things and help them create an outline and we'll do it together, you know. Um, one point, last point, which is I don't think there's been enough talk about the opportunity to use this period to rest. You know how much yeah. rest? I mean, my God, I've been coaching for 22 years straight <laughs> and I've never gotten as much rest that I have gotten now. I feel like, like a kid in the candy store. Like I'm so energized to go out there and do some stuff. But I mean, you know, unfortunately the, the circumstances you know, is what it is, but just the amount of rest that has been so good. And it's, I, I just think a lot of kids um going to be real well rested and should embrace that part too. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, this opportunity to rest your bodies, your minds, you know, everything and just let your body just, how many kids just totally have the opportunity to heal themselves now during this time? I, mean, I just think kids are going to come back very fresh and 
hopefully they don't come back and major injuries that take place because everybody would be so excited about getting back to the grind. Yeah, and that's 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 my only concern that um that you know I that I really really have is that through zeal to want to get right back and just be right where they left off. And unless there's has been a certain level of consistency, you're not going to be at that point in reality. But the the the, the fact that you didn't bring up about the opportunity to rest and not that push and have true relationships with your parents and siblings because y'all not in the car eating out now and trying to get that last meal. So you can, this is the time to actually reconnect either with yourself and with your with your family. And and that in itself is major because now you can have a conversation say about without the pressure of my game is on Saturday, my game is here to say, um, you know, I, I like the fact when you come or I appreciate the fact, levels of appreciation just for each other. And as a, a sibling that might be the one getting all the shine and all the support and everything like that, saying to the younger siblings or the ones that got to go for the ride and sit in the stands all the time, I thank you for just being there. Sometimes you don't want to be there, but it's important to know that I see you and I appreciate you. Because I think that's important well, to be among siblings um, because some people are just going along for the ride because you don't have a choice because your parents tell you you're going. And so, um, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think that was a great point, um, Coach Garner brought up about rest. It was also a great point that we brought up about injuries. So we know if we are getting out there too fast, that things could happen. So maybe as coaches, we can actually nothing major and long, but give our student athletes a, sn a synopsis of what can happen if you're not consistently trying to grow in, okay. in this sport or your conditioning. What could actually happen if you go out there too soon? Maybe just a little bit of, you know, a blurb of, why it is important to be consistent and why it is going to be more important if you were not, and you would know that if you, you know, you had to own up to that. If you weren't, these are the things that could actually happen. It could be a detriment to your, you know, your physical ability, your muscles and your bones and things of that nature. So maybe we can try to figure out something that we can send our student athletes. Okay. Why it is important to do this. All right. And just kind of put it on time. So last thing, because we get ready to end up. Um, anything I wanted to say about lessons learned, what can all of us as parents and coaches and ADs kind of share with our ourselves and kind of for us to understand that what is a lesson learned that we can get from this um I would say for me is definitely I know it was, as we tell kids all the time you know to do your best do this like this my thing is definitely maximize the time that you have because you never know when it's going to be over we always think about it as far as a physical injury or maybe academic issue or something like that. But nobody, nobody would have seen this coming to know that it would be at this level. So anything I would tell the athlete is anytime you hit that floor and as a coach, make sure you prepare them mentally and physically to be like, anytime you hit that floor, this is your time to shine. Because if you sit there at home now trying to do a highlight tape after all the film we got, hours and hours of film and you can't find a highlight tape, you just was out there doing nothing to a degree, you know, so maximize the time you have. You should be able to see progression in every game, anything that you have, whether it's your practice or your game, you should be able to see progression within yourself. So maximize the time will be my statement. What would be, so going down the line, before we close this out, what would be your statement to your athletes and either your, each other as peers? Anybody can go. I think for me, um... My, my offensive coordinator always calls out kids that are successful process trusters. But I would say enjoy the process. I mean, as coaches, we know our processes that we put our kids through and that we go through. But just like for them, sometimes it has a shelf life. So we got to enjoy the process of what we go for the day-to-day -day grind. Even, you know, Coach Rob had a good point with getting the rest, but I missed that grind, <laughs> you know, because that's what I'm used to for 23 years. It's what we do, but you have to enjoy the grind. So don't get so caught up into um, the wins and losses. Enjoy the, the relationship you have with the kids. Because now for spring sport kids that were athletes in, in our county, they, they're done. Like Coach Arrington. Arrington, you know, he, he's a spring sport coach. The, part of the relationship he could have built with the kids or, or that season he could have had is now gone. gone. So as coaches and, and players, we got enjoy and embrace the process. Okay. I would say 
I'm trying to take the opportunity to help them recognize the importance of athletics. Um, everybody sees how we feel right now with it not being around, whether mm. professionally, college level, and high school level, you, you see how important it is. So it's our opportunity to make sure it's everyday life to our student athletes um, and to everybody else. I think it's also a time for us to be able to show the, the, the things that we can teach them outside of just the X's and O's mm -hmm. and falling back on some of those lessons that we tried to teach them through sports. Well, here's an opportunity to apply that again. Um, and not just from, say, the head coach's perspective, but as an opportunity to rely on some of the leadership, maybe the captains, mm -hmm. some of your upperclassmen to go ahead and, and take on some of that leadership role in this situation so that when we do get back out there, we'll be ready to roll and have a little bit more support from not just, you know, the head coach being the only voice, even in this situation. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Coach Donna? Hey, I, I think... You know, what I do and who I am is a separation, right? And things can be taken away from us, as we can see, with, with a flash, you know? And if I'm just a basketball player and I don't have an identity of who I am as a young man, then I'm lost, you know? And I think that's a valuable lesson to be taught right here and right now. And this is the reason, young man, we get on you guys or young ladies, we get on you athletes so hard about going to class and doing what you're supposed to do academically. So that now, when it really comes down to what you have done at this particular point, mm -hmm. you know, are you ready to, you know, be in a position where you can get yourself a full scholarship, a half scholarship, some money, you know, you got, you got kids that scrambling around you know, and doing this and doing that. Got to take the SAT one more time to be able to qualify and things of that nature. Well, you know, how about, you know, listening to some of that wisdom that comes from your coach about, you know, being where you're supposed to be, doing the things that you're supposed to do and being ready, you know. And so I just think this is a valuable time to, to you know, find out who you are as a young person, you know, without, Sports, without the sports, you know, mm -hmm. without the sports, you know, do you still make an impact? Who are you? That's the next session. I know, right there. <laughs> I know what I tell my guys always that you guys are playing space. All you guys got a hand, just some hands are bosses and some are possibles. You got to make it work. So I don't I like care that. if you're handy. I like that. Yeah. So because of the unique challenges of the schools I work at, in terms of their facilities and stuff, some are great and some are, we make it work. I tell them, hey, you still got to produce the same way on the field, the same way in the classroom, the same way when you leave, go home, the same way when you show up. So what I told them before we had the break um, for the rest of the spring was um, it's a bad hand. You know, this hand is bad for you spring guys, some of your senior guys, some of your junior guys, the incoming freshmen. It is a bad hand. But – at the same time, we got to get this stuff completed. So I told them to do two things. Communicate with each other, which they have, and keep working the best you can, which they have. And I said, when we come back together again, just know we're going to keep working. But don't get upset. Just let them know that, hey, you're going to play again. And when it happens, you just finish what you started. Okay. Anybody else? I think the biggest thing that we've kind of learned is how to deal with adversity. And, um, you know, our kids aren't used to hearing no. Like, now it's, you don't have a choice but to hear no. No, you cannot play. No, you cannot do this. No, you cannot go hang out with your friends. No, no, no. How to deal with that? Like, it, it that has been a, um, a thing for our um, – our men's basketball team like they want they didn't get our team never got to play one game in the conference tournament mm -hmm. so it's like they want to go shoot why can't we go into the gym it's just us we've always been together so we can't contaminate anybody else it's just us we live in the same apartment why can't we do this because you can't the answer is no mm -hmm. now <laughs> accept it you know deal with it move forward um and I think that whole um, that whole piece of dealing with adversity, our kids just, they need a better job of doing that. Like, okay, now you can't do this. What are you going to do instead? 
Mm -hmm. And like the other coach said about creativity, get creative with your workouts. Like this is a time when, again, we have to rely on something other than sports, but you still can have that be a part of your life. Just find a different way to do it. All right. Yeah, if I could, I definitely for me is um, in these times is, especially for soccer is, uh, it's a good wake up call for everyone involved in the soccer industry of how, prof how we've professionalized the youth sport um, so much. And so for me, my kind of message to my players is now is the time that you have to own your participation in the sport, right? You have to be genuine. So those who aren't genuine in their participation is going to show because, you know, I tell them at the end of this, if you haven't learned something new or you haven't grown in some way, then, you know, it wasn't that you'd never had time. It's just, you weren't disciplined. Right. So, um, it's very, for me, it's a kind of a, check for them for the players to to be you know how genuine is your interest in the sport if you want to be at the very elite level okay um i would like to say um as a parent and as a coach i think this is a great time to get to know your children and to get to know your athletes um and why i say children because you know we're on the run and we're having snippet conversations over here and things of that nature but this is the time to really know who they are um, as they're growing and as they're learning and they're there, as Vera said, um, as they're overcoming adversity and trying to figure out who your athletes are, you know, do you even know what they enjoy, what their um, potential career endeavors are, what school would like, all the things that you may not have the opportunity to really get to know who they are, get to know them. Um, and then I think that will build a better um, camaraderie when you get back to, with them because you have a relationship now a real relationship outside of the sport of choice um and as a parent you know sitting down playing um different games and things of that nature we enjoy that so i just wanted us all to make sure that we're just um overcoming the adversity ourselves not allowing this, uh, our student athletes to see us stressing over this and building a great relationship and rapport with them and then as amakers coach amaker said allow them to know that this could have been your last game this was your last game on the field on the court on the pool wherever you are if this was your last how are you going to have the last memory of your last so you just continue to push their their mental their physical their emotional because mentally they have to be strong so that would be my suggestion all right and we just had one um person join us is that coach uh jordan gordon i can't hear y'all i don't even see his mic up all right well He's there, but can't hear him. And I will say to this to everybody, um, thank you. That was a quick that, oh, that was a quick hour. And so I will say thank you to everybody. And there were some nuggets. You all just don't know all the notes I have right here. And as I replay this, there are a bunch of nuggets that you all dropped. And I think that's what we, we got to continue to have conversations. Um, the AB game plan is just something I kind of came up with um, because you know, we got to help each other, you know, when we're in season and coaches and stuff like that, when we're in season, we're just, we just fly by night. We're just passing each other, dropping in little conversations here and there. But at this point, we're at a point where we can really, really have an impact and ideally bridge that gap between what the, some of the things that happen on that youth sports side, the high school level is where we kind of start refining and redeveloping and reestablishing some good habits before we give them off to the next level. And there's a, the interscholastic high school level is that bridge between the two. Um, because from, I've been attending these various conferences and things like that. And I will tell you, um, once some of the kids get to the college levels, those levels of supports that they should have or that they even seek out, um, they don't necessarily get. And so we gotta make sure that we're giving them, the university, a nice solid package as, most as closely as we can because we are with them for four solid years in close connection and um other than that i will say i just want to say thank you i will share the i'll put it on zoom and um youtube that way you could be able to have access to it and i will do a summary of what nuggets came out of this and so if nothing else i would say 
good afternoon. Enjoy yourself. Find you some good dinner or lunch or whatever <laughs> time it is. And um, next week, I don't know what the topic is going to be. I'll see what what guides base comes out based on what's going on in the atmosphere, other than Corona. But um, we definitely know that that's going to be uh, at the forefront. But I don't want that to guide everything that we think to do. All right. Thank you. And I appreciate everybody for coming to the show. Thanks, Rachel. See oh, y'all later. Enjoy. Right. Bye. -bye. Later. Bye.